Hello, beautiful love muffin. I hope you're doing so marvelously today. Have you been wanting to crochet your first top, but you're not sure how to get started or if you'll be successful? Well, have no fear because I am here today to help you blast those fears to the wayside. Be gone, fears. I'm gonna be showing you four things today that you need to know in order to be successful crocheting your first top, period. To demonstrate today, we have a beautiful new crochet top designed for you by Michelle Ferguson. The Montestrella tee is a gorgeous pattern for the beginner crocheter because it's simple in stitches and construction. It's worked in the round from the top down, so you can try it on as you go, making sure that it fits the whole way through. Another reason that this pattern is great for beginners is because it is a tee, not a full sweater with sleeves, so you're not going to get stuck in sleeveville. Sleeve. Ville, the ville, the village of sleeves where you get stuck because you get bored making sleeves. It features a fun open stitch pattern just using single, half double, and double crochets. So super simple. I know you can do this. We use our Oasis fingering yarn for this, which is a super popular camel fiber and silk blend fingering weight yarn. It comes in all kinds of hand dyed colors, including this gorgeous playa colorway that we use for this pattern. And since it is a fingering weight, it doesn't take too many skeins to make this pattern. And it's gonna make a gorgeous flow, drape, and shine to your project. You can download the pattern and get more information on the yarn at expressionfiberarts.com. And also check the description box if you would like the direct link. I'll be demonstrating some techniques today to help you have success in crocheting your first sweater. These should work for most yoke style and raglan style patterns. So although I'll be using this pattern today as an example, the techniques should apply to other patterns as well. Step one is to make a gauge swatch. This may be the most important thing in this whole process. I know you wanna skip it, but it is super important to do a gauge swatch with the recommended yarn and hook size in the pattern so that you're getting the same gauge as the designers and so your sweater ends up fitting. I went ahead and worked up a little gauge swatch in the exact stitch pattern that this pattern calls for using the recommended yarn and hook size. As you can see, I got a little over four and a half inches this way and just about spot on four inches this way. And it's supposed to be four by four. So since I'm getting too few stitches per inch, I need to actually go down a hook size, work another gauge swatch and try to get that four inches. If your swatch were for example, more like this, you would need to use a bigger hook size, work another gauge swatch, and continue doing that until you get a perfect gauge swatch. So keep adjusting your hook size until you get gauge, and then you're ready to move forward. Now that you have your gauge swatch all figured out, you're ready to move on to step number two, which is how to pick your size. This pattern comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. The bust measurements shown in the pattern are your actual bust measurements, like for your body. Side note, most patterns actually list the finished garment measurements, so just good to keep in mind. Whip out the old measuring tape and measure your actual bust size. Pick the size that is the same or slightly larger than your bust size. Mine's 34 inches, so we went with a size small, which is 34 inches. If you would like a little bit looser fit, you can choose a bigger size. Once you've conquered the gauge swatch and you've picked your size, you are ready to go ahead and get started on your sweater, which is step number three. You start at the top, the neck on this pattern, and you work in the round until you get ready to separate out for the armhole. So you can actually have something to put your arms through and you're gonna skip stitches in order to create those holes for your arms. I shall explain. For example, when you've worked 40 rounds in the size small, you're gonna have all of this. It's gonna be one big cylinder, and you're gonna be right here. To separate out for the sleeves, you're gonna work one half double crochet in each of the first 45 stitches, and remember it's gonna depend on your size how many stitches. You're gonna skip the next 55 stitches, which are all of these. So just skip those to create the armhole. Then you're gonna work one half double crochet in each of the next 90 stitches, skip the next 55 stitches again, just skip those and make a loop, and then to finish up that row, you're gonna go ahead and work 45 more half double crochets. And you now have your sleeves separated out and you're good to work on your body. As a little miniature version, just to demonstrate, here's the neck, and then you're gonna work down however many rows for your intended size until you're ready to separate out for the sleeves. 
I'm gonna turn it upside down. And you're just gonna follow along in the pattern however many half double crochets it asks you to work for your size. So you'll work across until it's time to separate out for your sleeves. And we'll just go ahead and say that it's right here. So we want these to be our sleeve stitches. You're gonna skip all of those, boop, and just fold your piece like so, and go ahead and start working in the next stitch and work your stitches along. And you can see we just skipped those forming a little armhole. Let me show you one more time. Work the required number of stitches that the pattern calls for for your size. And when you're ready to go ahead, and I'm just working a random number of stitches here since it's a demo. When you're ready to go ahead and skip the next stitches for the next sleeve, bloop, 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 count those out and go ahead and go ahead and half double crochet into the next required stitch and there's that little sleeve on that side. Then you'll just finish out this row and I'm already there. You'll finish out this row and if you'll go ahead and look at my cute funny little example. So here's your neck you separate it out for the sleeves here, and then this is the body that you'll just start working in the round. So I hope that makes sense. Once you've separated out for the armholes, you're just gonna continue working in the round to complete the body. And to get the perfect length, just go to your closet and pick out a sweater or a top that you love and just duplicate that length. And finally, once you've finished your top and you love it so much, you're gonna wanna know how to take care of it. To clean and block your sweater, just place it into a bowl with some lukewarm water and a good gentle wool wash, being very careful with your top while it's wet. Then give it a gentle little rinse and place it in a towel to squish out that excess moisture. And then you're gonna pin it into shape and allow it to air dry. That's called blocking, and that is going to give your sweater the perfect shape. We do get asked a lot, do I have to block my sweater every single time I wash it? And the answer is not necessarily. Depends on the fiber content and what yarn you used, but honestly, usually I just wash mine and then lay it out and allow it to air dry. Alrighty, now that you have done a gauge swatch, you have picked your size, you have made your beautiful sweater, and you've learned how to take care of it, you get to go out and wear your beautiful new piece. And above all, make sure to keep your confidence high. I know it can be easy to get discouraged, but let's not do this on our first crochet top. Why are you laughing? Because you said let's not do this on our first Let's crochet. not, we're not doing this, okay. Don't get discouraged, speak kind words to yourself. You have got this. You're gonna make your first top. It's gonna be amazing. You're gonna wear it and you're gonna love it. After all, it's just one stitch at a time. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and that you are encouraged to go out and make your first crochet top. Thank you for joining me and I am gonna see you next time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye for now. Ta-ta for now, folks. Toodlebugs.